not sure if a lot of you guys are aware of this, but a lot of top players usually just edit their own skins, as most of it comes down to preference. So you would be the best person to get the skin exactly how you'd want. In this video, I'll be showing some simple skin tricks that you can add to your own skin. Most of these are minor and only changes a few details, so feel free to copy any of these as you'd like. When you play with the receptor this high from the bottom, you're sort of missing out on this additional screen space. Changing up the scroll speed, we can notice that in both cases, the notes are on the screen for the same amount of time. So what's the difference? Allowing the notes to take up more space means that they're more spread out and can make it easier to read denser patterns, as there's less overlap. When you play with the shorter playfield, then you'd only have to focus on a small area when it comes to reading. This gets the same effect as playing with the screen cover. Now, what about hidden players? Well, hidden has a similar purpose, but happens at the bottom of the screen. Some players find this easier to read as there will be less objects on the screen to focus on at any given time. This can make some LN release patterns harder to act as you'll be needing to pay attention to different lengths on variable LN sizes. So one way to address this is with the transparent hidden cover. From this, you're able to sort of tune out what's going on at the bottom half of the screen while still being able to recognize the full distance of long notes. Now this would only benefit you under specific circumstances, so I wouldn't imagine everyone wanting to try this. Going back to the receptor, it's important to make sure the graphics line up with the hit position itself, as there can be a discrepancy between what you see on screen versus when you're actually supposed to hit. An easy way to tell if it's correct is by holding a long note, as it'll pause exactly where the hit position is. You would of course need to have keys under notes enabled, and it's great for really seeing exactly where the notes are, but the downside is that you can't always see the receptor. A solution would be to make keys under notes disabled and create a semi-transparent graphic for the key down image. Lastly, with the key images, you can make this part opaque. This gets rid of any notes going below the receptor when you're playing harder maps, as the extra clutter can mess up reading. Moving on to the playfield, and I've had a lot of players ask me about this one. The reason I have this graphic here is because the default animation for the 320 graphic just has way too much going on, and it's even more noticeable when you're playing with double time. A lot of players make this graphic invisible altogether, but this is where I anchor my vision when it comes to reading. To do this, you need to edit the Mania Stage Bottom graphic on your skin. You can take it another step and even animate some glow or color effect. When you hit any lower judgments, they usually cover up this graphic completely, so it's still easy to understand your performance while playing. Another issue I had with the hit animations was the combo counter, as it stretches each time you hit a note. A subtle way to minimize this effect is to preemptively squish all your combo number graphics, so when you're playing a higher strain map, the notes can appear normal and minimal. I see a lot of players using incredibly wide column widths for their 4k skins, which is alright, but I think it'd be worth getting used to a smaller width if you plan on playing 7k and up. Think of your vision as a wide cone angled onto your monitor, and the further things are away from the center, the less focus you can really pay attention to it. Increasing this number to 7k or 10k, and you'd end up having to pay attention to the width of your entire monitor at once. I currently use 55 for each key count, so anything between 50 and 64 would be a good number to use. The horizontal position of the playfield doesn't matter that much, but if it's centered, that makes it easier to glance at the error bar quickly. You can have segmented lines between each column, but I really don't think that's needed, as the background colors do a good enough job of dividing them, even for 10k. I know there's a few players who like this line in the middle. I personally don't use it as I try to think of my two hands as one unit, but for 12k and up, it helps for other reasons. For the background of the playfield, I like to have an alternating pattern depending on the key count. The colors I use seem a bit arbitrary for some of these key counts, but I think it's a nice way to mentally group the fingers in your head. This change might not be extremely beneficial, but it adds a level of neatness to higher key counts and can slightly help in moments where there's not much going on in the map with the notes. This idea also expands to the notes with having their own color depending on the finger. I talked about this in my previous skin analysis video, so you can experience with different colors depending on what works for you. If you're planning on playing laser more, then you can just push these note colors onto the background and choose a monochrome color for the notes themselves, so you can take full advantage of the timing note color option. I tried remaking the laser skin colors. The last thing I want to touch on is long notes. A lot of players already have this, but you can make the long note body color match that of the notes. This can help with some LN heavy charts and you can keep track of where each finger should be. Long notes also have the option to be stretched. This means you can make them a gradient color, which can give you an idea of when the long notes is about to end. I'm going to be honest, this one doesn't have that much of a benefit, but it does look very neat and pretty, so it's worth using for those reasons alone. And with the long note tails, I've been seeing a lot of this Percy stuff, which I don't really understand. Like it's just a transparent gradient. This can kind of help make things look less cluttered compared to using fishtail or rounded tails. But honestly, with someone of my LN ability,
This doesn't help at all, as I usually make the mistakes during the body or inch part of the long note. So for this, I will simply say, use a clean long note tail, whether that be the Percy thing or just a flat top. Even if you're using a more circular skin, having them cut off flat, which would intersect with the middle of the receptor, can really clean up some dense fall LN patterns and create a distinct endpoint of which you can focus your reading on. Anyway, as I said in the beginning of the video, a lot of skin choices comes down to preference, so not everybody will agree with what's presented in this video. What's important is that you really think about what aspects of your skin do you want to improve or add more clarity to, and try to find a style that really works with your reading ability. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any additional tips or cool ideas when it comes to skinning.